back to the book. He's okay, well. Let me catch us up to where we were talking about the shock that happens when people don't expect something. Back to the book. This is a general rule in war and decides all battles and all actions. It comes from the human heart and is what induced me to compose this work. I do not believe that anyone yet has attempted to find there, find there the reasons for the poor success of armies. Thus, when you have stationed your troops behind a parapet, they hope by their fire to prevent the enemy from passing the ditch and mounting it. If this happens, in spite of the fire, they give themselves up for lost, lose their heads, and fly. It would be much better to post a single rank there armed with pikes whose business will be to push the assailant back as fast as they attempt to mount. And certainly they will execute this duty because it is what they expect and what they prepared for. If with this you post infantry formed according to my method into centuries at a distance of 30 paces from the entrenchment, these troops will see that they are placed there to charge the enemy as fast as he enters and attempts to form. They will not be astonished to see the enemy enter because they expect it and will charge vigorously. Instead, if instead they had been placed on the parapet, they would have fled. That is how a trifle changes everything in war and how human weaknesses cannot be managed except by allowing for them. That's that's heavy right there. Yes, yeah, M- Human weaknesses cannot be managed. You have to allow for them. Think about that. Yeah. Think, you know, you have to do that all the time as a leader. Yeah. You have to, well, you have to try and do it as a leader. Because if you don't try and manage these weaknesses y- and you, you, you don't allow for them, then they're going to they're gonna jam you up, as you would say. Yeah. So you got somebody with a big ego? You you gotta put you gotta put them in a situation where that ego is gonna flourish and not be offended and and when it does get offended you gotta allow for that and how you're gonna adapt to it. Yeah, it's like expecting perfection. You know, you know, like if you expect perfection. Yeah. Well, you're gonna be let down a bunch. Yeah, is what I'm saying. So if you allow for yeah. imperfection, it's yeah. kind of you can you can just manage better. So there's two major points. You know, number one, if you set people up so that what they ex- what they expect to happen happens they're gonna have a better chance of achieving what it is you want them to achieve. Because mm. if these guys are in the parapet and all of a sudden they get run upon and they're surprised by it and their mission was to defend the parapet, well now they're they're getting overrun. Whereas if you say no, once the parapet gets taken, you attack. Now they're, they know the parapet's gonna, it's not gonna be a surprise to them. They expect it to happen and then when they, they get the opportunity, they're gonna get in there and get after it. Mm. But man, allowing the, the manage Managing human weakness, only, the only way you can do it is by allowing for it. At least some measure of it. Yeah. Good. Good lesson learned. That's something you can think about as you lead people. You can think about, hey man, this is a little weakness here. And if I don't allow for that, I don't give that some room. And I count on, you know, uh, Flynn, Flynn from Echelon Front, newest member of Echelon Front, but he just wrote an article about a guy, he was stationed on a ship before he got to the teams, and he was saying this guy had been late for work, and but he was trying to bring the guy along, had a lot of potential, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, they go to actually do a, a important training mm. with their weapons on the ship that they were on, and the guy missed the ship leaving port. And he says, you know, I should have fired the guy before this, and now I'm out here, I don't have this primary guy, and he let down me and let down the ship and everything like that. But he didn't account for human weakness. He, you know, he thought that he could bring this guy along, but he mm-hmm. just, you know, it's one of those things. If you don't allow for that human weakness in there, you might be, you might be getting left high and dry, mm-hmm. which is not good. That's on the, we made that thing on the Echelon Front webpage, which is called the Platoon Hut. Yeah, yeah, and we're okay. just like writing little. I guess it could That's be referred to as a blog. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really a blog because a blog to me seems a very, you know, just hey, we're just gonna write whatever. We're bloggy. Yeah. So this is this is some little. I guess you might want to call them articles. Yeah, and there's like le- like le- little lessons. Yeah, in yeah, there, of course, right? little lessons. Yeah, yes. it. I, yeah, I liked. I enjoy a pl- yeah, platoon no, hut. The post platoon from hut from time to time. And the reason we called it platoon hut is because that's where you'd sit around and. Talk shop. I guess right, we right. talk about other things, but when you get back from a training op, 
Because mm-hmm. when you're overseas, you, you still have a platoon hut, but it's not the platoon. I guess it is the platoon hut. But anyways, yeah, even there. So when you get back from an operation, you come and you debrief, and you, you get done with the official debrief, but then you go into the platoon hut. Uh, and yeah, yeah. About, hey, Chapin, man, you should have yeah. done this. And so yeah. so huh. that's one of those. He, he as a young uh, surface warfare officer in the Navy, didn't allow for the human weakness of this young sailor, and it mm. cost him. 